Hello everyone. Today, we're going to dive into the basics of drawing and coloring in Affinity Designer on iPad in a super simple way. I think you should watch this video until the end because I'll be showing a super easy, fast, and effective coloring method. It only takes a few steps and is super helpful for you. So, let's get started. Let's draw a cat again, starting with a simple character with minimal lines. For inking, I'm sure you're already familiar with the tools on desktop. They work the same way in this version, with the same basic principles for creating closed shapes without gaps, just like in most drawing programs. Personally, I like inking in Designer Persona because it's vector-based, which makes it easy to edit, copy and paste, or even change the stroke style. If you're comfortable with raster drawing, you can use the Pixel Persona, which I haven't talked much about yet. As I say, I'm focused on the Designer Persona for now. You could also draw in vector and rasterize it later to work on it in Pixel Persona. It all depends on the quality and style you want, as well as your personal preference. Alright, once your inking is done, duplicate the layer so you have a backup in case you want to edit your lines later. Now, let's take a look at how we usually color things. Because this cat is just a stroke lines that hasn't been expanded yet, we'll use the pencil tool to draw the colored area instead. Or use the brush or pen tool to create the outline then expand stroke and use the vector flood fill tool to fill it with color. Using vector lines has some limitations when coloring. For example, the node points at the start and end of a line need to snap together with other lines to form a closed shape. Otherwise, you'll need to expand the stroke to fill the area. Next, I will present two incredibly simple methods for you. Select all the strokes, tap the command controller twice, and select expand stroke. Why do we need to expand strokes? It's the easiest way to close gaps between lines if you're not sure where they are. When you expand the stroke, use the Shape Builder tool to remove any unwanted shapes from the cat. When using the Shape Builder tool to remove lines with pressure, you must always expand the stroke first to preserve the shape of the pressure you applied. Once done, combine them into a single shape. After combining, if you find any gaps, use the node tool to select the node points and drag them to close the area. Tap the three dots at the top and select fill mode to set it to winding. If there are multiple gaps, repeat this process until everything is complete. It's a good idea to name your layers properly to avoid confusion while working, ensuring you don't select the wrong ones. Okay. We will get a shape converted from the expand stroke, and it's ready to use. Now, let's move on to the method I mentioned, making coloring incredibly easy for this video. Use the pencil tool to draw a shape around the entire character. Select both the ink layer and the shape you just drew, then use the shape builder tool to remove any excess areas. That's it. Let's move on to method 2. You can also use boolean divide to cut out the extra areas. As for the boolean divide method, it seems a bit complex and creates too many layers. You can add them together to form one piece or leave them separate. However, for some tasks I've worked on, this approach can still be quite effective. Okay, method 3, called the fill holes method. I think this one is even easier and super convenient. Start by duplicating the ink layer as usual. Choose your main color, for this layer, 
you can change the color later if needed. Then tap the three dots in the top menu and select Fill Holes. See how easy that is? I really love this method. I encourage you to try applying it to your work. It's super simple, quick, and efficient. Just make sure the character's outlines are always closed shapes, with all the drawn lines properly touching. Name this layer Main Color. You can use this layer for other effects like shadows, highlights, or added details. Alright, after that, use the Vector Flood Fill tool to add colors to different areas. When working with different colors in the color panel, you might need to study a bit more to improve your workflow. Watching YouTube videos might help, as there are many tutorials that explain these techniques better than I can. Once I get more familiar with this, I might create a video for beginners in the future. When it's time to add shadows and highlights, duplicate the main color layer you made earlier. After duplicating the main color and naming the layers for shadows and highlights, you can switch to the Pixel Persona to paint. Select any vector shape and use the brush tool in Pixel Persona to add details directly inside that shape without needing extra commands. However, I won't go into detail on this for now. After that, set the fill color to none, and select Multiply in the layer panel for shadows or overlay for highlights. After coloring using the Vector Flood Fill tool, don't forget to add similar colors into a single piece for easier workflow moving forward. To place a shape inside another shape, tap and hold the shape, then drag it onto the one you want to insert it into layer you want, or tap the three-dot menu at the top, select Insertion Target, as Inside. This is my easy coloring approach in Designer Persona. I hope this guide gives you a helpful new way to work. Generally, I don't design a lot of graphic styles, but I do focus more on illustration. Affinity Designer was primarily designed for graphic design, similar to Illustrator, and not specifically for drawing like Procreate or Clip Studio Paint. However, Affinity Designer still offers tools that work quite well for creating vector art. And as you get comfortable with it, Alright, that's all for this one. I've been messing around with Affinity Designer on iPad for a bit. And honestly, I'm really liking it, easy to use and pretty quick to get the hang of. If you've already used the desktop version, you'll probably be a pro in no time. But even if you're a newbie like me, it's still pretty chill. I know I might have skipped over some things or missed a detail or two. If anything seems off, just give me a shout. It's all good. This is only my second video on iPad, so I'm still figuring it out, but I'll keep improving each time. If there's anything you want me to talk about or try, just drop a comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.